If you're a beginner and you want to learn how to play rock or metal guitar and you want to play it well, then you're in the right place. Here I'm going to show you how to play song number one from Metal Rhythm Guitar Volume 1. I wrote uh, Metal Rhythm Guitar Volumes 1 and 2 for Hal Leonard Publishing and they cover a range of hard rock metal styles and progress from a beginner level right all the way up to a professional playing level. So covers the techniques, the concepts, builds the elements that you really need for solid musicianship as it progresses through 12 chapters and at the end of each chapter there's a song that applies the ideas in that chapter and so these 12 songs progress uh, as well and the first song is called Whips and Chains. It's a um, classic metal groove. It's pretty simple. It's a moderate tempo. Uh, basically what you're really doing is just sliding power chords around but uh, you're sliding them around in time and executing you know pulse and and creating that flow when you're playing and that's what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, first I'm going to show you the song. I'm going to play it. Just uh, watch it and get a sense of what it sounds like and, and watch what I'm doing. And then I'm going to break it down and I'm going to show you all the parts. And not just the parts, I'm going to give you tips for where, you, where to put your attention, things that people commonly do wrong, what to watch out for, that kind of thing. So, here it is, uh, Whips and Chains, song number one. So now let's uh, break it down. First thing is the power chords. Uh, these are two note chords, two string power chords. And the first one I'm going to show you is D, D5. And that consists of the root note D, which is here at the fifth fret on the fifth string. Now when you play that, try to play uh, close to the metal fret, not all the way down here, but uh, on this end, but not on top of the fret either, so close to it. So there's D. And then the other note is going to be played, I'm going to use my fourth finger on two frets higher on the next higher string. Now notice even though I'm saying higher string, I mean higher in pitch. The strings are physically lower, which are higher strings. So D and this note, A, on, on the fourth string, played together make a D5 power chord. Now what's important here with power chords is that uh, you play in such a way that you tend to keep the other strings quiet as you play so that 
even if you accidentally bumped them or you picked hard, maybe you hit all the strings, it's nice when uh, only the ones that you want to ring will ring out. And here's how I accomplish that. I leave my, leave my first finger over five strings, uh, touching the underside of my finger across all the strings, but pressing only on the fifth string. So all these four, these four are all muted. And this one rings, and then the top of my finger is going to touch and mute the sixth string. So now, with one finger, I literally have all the strings muted except the one I want. Now that takes a little getting used to holding that position, but that's really worth uh, some practice. So hold that, then this finger comes down here two frets higher on the next string, and the underside of this finger can also uh, mute uh, the string under that. So now you got a D5 and you don't have to be so uh, careful. I mean you still want to strive to pick the right strings, but if you do happen to miss or you hit hard, <coughs> Uh, hit all six of them or whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, it still sounds uh, like a D. So, that's the D5 power chord. I showed you that one because the song's in the key of D, which means that all the chords kind of cycle around and center on D as their home base. Now, the song doesn't actually start on D. The first chord it actually hits is uh, C, C5, which is here at the third fret. So you hit C and then slide to D. Now, uh, the slide is not particularly um, easy at the beginning because you're clamping down on the fretboard and if you clamp too hard, it's going to be really hard to shift. And if you don't clamp hard enough, the notes aren't going to ring. So you have to kind of find that sweet spot where you can hold onto the chord and shift it and also hold the strength of your first to fourth uh, finger so that that doesn't do this as you go to slide and, and lose the, the, the width. So, practice that back and forth. Back and forth from C to D. You don't want to always have to be uh, looking exactly at what you're doing. You know, you can look at your hand most of the time, and you will, but try once in a while looking away and seeing if you can do it by feel. So, if I'm not looking at it, think about your fourth finger, where your fourth finger is while you're holding C, and then shift to put your first finger where your fourth finger is, and then shift back to put your fourth finger where your um, first finger is. And of course, I don't mean, I mean holding the right strings, but I'm, I'm talking about horizontally on the neck, shifting two frets back and forth. Get a feel for that. What does that feel like? The next chord is going to be F. Five, which is three frets higher at the eighth fret. So uh, the distance there, three frets, is a little bit uh, wider than the two fret. Get used to that. Now put them all together. Hit a chord, slide. Hit a chord, slide. So practice that a while. Those three chords uh, make up the the core of the motif here. Uh, it's a two bar phrase. It actually sounds like this. And repeats when it hits that C. Cycles around and repeats each time. It's two measures, which means a uh, measure is four beats, so that's eight beats long. As you do that, you notice we're counting everything in terms of beats. Pulse. Pulse is everything. You know, when it comes to rhythm guitar, you're trying to build this solid foundation, and what you really want is to develop a really good sense of pulse. So uh, we're going to start with that right at the beginning of this method, and then we just keep developing it as the method continues. You know, if you think about it, as you get to be playing more and more complex rhythms, what the rhythms do is they they uh, sometimes line up with the pulse, and then sometimes they oppose the pulse. And as they oppose the pulse in more and more complex ways, it's really important that you have a good feel for the pulse. It's not good enough to think it. You have to actually have a feel for the pulse so that you can express it. And you don't just express it you know, by tapping your foot. That's a way to express it. But you really should be able to tap your, 
tap your heel, tap your toes, tap both feet, uh, your, your, you know, feel it here, um, you know, bang your head, whatever. Feel pulse in your whole body and practice expressing as you're playing. This is really, really important because if you don't do that, you're not communicating a groove or pulse. And it's easiest to do it at the beginning when our rhythms are simple. And when you get the hang of doing it there, then as we progress and we get to more difficult rhythms, you'll be able to continue feeling that pulse and, and you'll build it right on up and have a really good sense of timing, which is fundamental to being a good musician. So, two, three, four. Playing with the pulse at that speed, those are called quarter notes. Playing twice as fast, that's eighth notes. So what an eighth note does is it puts a uh, note on the downbeat and on the upbeat when your foot's in the air. One, and, two, and, three, and. These ands, or upbeats, fall halfway between downbeats. So as we play the song, what you'll notice is you hit beat one and then you slide. One, so that is the second eighth note that we slide to. The kiss of death for the beginner is that they will try to uh, tap out the rhythm you're playing on the guitar. And that's exactly the wrong thing to do and it'll mess you up and you'll never develop a good sense of pulse unless you get it right here. The key is making sure that one and is up and then you hit two when you don't play. Now after you get that, then you need to keep repeating that and playing until that pulse just kind of comes out of you effortlessly and naturally. Um, don't try to anticipate pulse like it's a, uh, like you're trying to think, you know, when that thing's gonna happen. Think of it more like a motion, like a wheel that's turning and it's one, two, three, four. That way, that motion uh, will will kind of drive you and then and then you'll develop this much better sense of timing so Practice that until your your executing the pulse doesn't falter, you know, it's got to be smooth It's got to be even it's got to be strong. You should be able to keep it going One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Like that you got a slide at the end of this riff and the speed that you slide off of it, pay attention to that. Uh, if you slide too fast or too slow, it's not going to sound right. So uh, play around with that. Again, the timing, the fact of beat two being uh, even, the fact of the way the slides are working, all of this was intentionally created to give you things that you really need um, uh, as you progress as a musician. And, and this is like pared down to the, to the crucial stuff. It's really not about the song. It's actually about the techniques. Um, so, that being said, uh, let's move on to the next part. The song is arranged with a riff, and it plays the riff, it plays the riff again, and then it changes chords to G, F, and then back to the riff. So, the G and the F drop down to the sixth string, third fret, uh, G5 power chord here and here for F. Now I'm playing one three for these uh, on this string and I'm playing one four on this string. Uh, some people will play one three for everything or some people will play one four for everything. Uh, there really aren't any rules there. I tend to like to switch between them. It seems a little nicer or smoother when I use uh, three or four and switch, but it's not necessary. You can, you can do four or, or three. Um, Use what's comfortable for you, but uh, if you don't have any preference, uh, I recommend maybe one and four here, because when you stand and your guitar is a little lower, you have to reach around further and drop your wrist lower to hit uh, one and three, then it's a little more comfortable to do one and four. Then it moves to another section, and there's a guitar solo in the backing track over this other section. This is played with... <laughs> Uh, rests. So you play one and and then beat two is a rest. Stop. Stop. A rest is a is a, a moment of silence. And 
a lot of people don't realize this at the beginning that rests have to be played just like notes. You execute the rest at precisely the right time. So as you're tapping, it's one and stop, three and stop. Um, to stop the strings, you do two things at the same time. You lift pressure on the left hand. That pressure doesn't come off the strings entirely because then they would ring open. You just lift up so that you're not pushing them down against the fretboard, but you're still damping the strings, you're still touching them. So left hand uh, does that, uh, comes up. Right hand, the heel or the side of your right hand comes down and stops the strings. When both hands do that together, you've got a nice clean rest. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So there's a two bar phrase. And then the second time, uh, it's the same thing except it substitutes a G chord. Uh, then the third time, it's the same as the first. And then the fourth time, yeah. and back to the riff. So the, uh, the song is a simple song structure, very simple. Um, the riff kind of corresponds, if it were vocal music, the riff would be like a chorus and then uh, the other part would be like a verse. Now in this case I, I threw guitar solos on it because uh, we're not doing vocal music um, and that way you have something to listen to that makes it a little more interesting changes. But basically the song structure, you, you come in with this intro and then you do what is a, essentially a verse or solo and then you come back to the riff, would be like a chorus, then back to another solo or verse and then back to the, uh, to the chorus and then it's just, uh, it just repeats for the outro. So that's pretty much all you need to get started on this first beginning song. But more important than playing the song really, of course, is you're getting started building the skill set that you need. It's important as you progress uh, as a guitar player that you learn music that inspires you. However, it's also really important that you learn music at the right level. And the right level is the level that that you're at or just slightly above so that you can stretch to it and and reach it and continue to build a little higher a little higher a little higher on the other hand if you are playing music let's say your favorite song that you love but it's just way beyond where you what your skill set is capable of pulling off what actually can happen is it doesn't sound good, it doesn't sound good, it doesn't sound good, and that's really discouraging eventually, and some people will give up, say, I just can't play very well. And that's not really true. All that you need is to make sure that you build sequentially to get the skill set so that you're at a level where you can play that song and play it well. And that's what metal rhythm guitar uh, does through the course of those two volumes. If you find that you're a beginner and maybe an absolute beginner and you're looking at this video and you practice some of this and it's just not quite coming together for you um, that's totally okay because in fact this song's asking a lot of you to be able to play all of these new chord shapes sound them shift them around and to be able to tap your foot as you're doing it it's actually asking quite a lot so if that's you I would encourage you to go get uh, Metal Rhythm Guitar Volume 1 and look at the first chapter. There are 26 examples that start very simple and build up step by step to prepare you for this first song. And by the time you go through all those, uh, you will be uh, able to do this and do it quite a bit better. Now on the other hand, if you can uh, rock through this song and it's no problem, you, you, know, you can play it and you can feel rhythm through the whole thing and you're pretty well hanging together with it, um, that's great, just go ahead and move on. There are five more chapters and five songs in, in volume one, and they just continue to, to develop um, all of the chording and all of the rhythmic ability. And let me fi say one final thing about, uh, about rhythmic ability. I think that because people are visually oriented, um, it's obvious when you pick up the guitar that you need to learn how to play these chord shapes and then you need to be able to fret them and, and make sure that the strings ring right and it sounds good, right? But rhythm is not so obvious. It's much more subtle because you can't see it. It's just something that you hear or feel. But in reality, 
in the long run, rhythm is what takes more practice and is what separates um, a proficient professional player from the guy who sits in his bedroom, might know all the, the chords in the song, but it just doesn't sound good. And if you want to be the guy that can actually play well, you need to invest time building the skill set of rhythm, which is what you get when you go through the metal rhythm guitar method. So, that being said, um, pick up a copy if that appeals to you, and I hope that you learned something from this video, and I'll see you next time.